welcome to face to face our guest today is anu gulati she is facilitator of a new indian american youth group from newton and we are going to talk to her today about the networking and leadership among indian american youth anu welcome to our studio thank you for having me and thank today. you for being here My Your pleasure. initiative of uh, Indian American Youth Group is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. And uh, it's uh, so there are two challenges, you know. At least I think the challenge is for the Indian American kids, and the challenge for the Indian American parents. Kids, in a way, they want to figure it out where they belong. Indian, American, both, and then the parents also wants. are little bit confused not i shouldn't say confused but you know uh, trying to figure it out how their kids should be brought up indian you know indian american both so a uh, some sort of a uh, you know that debate going on between these two generations and this is where i think your initiative really plays a very important role where you you know this provides an opportunity for the youth to to get involved in network so tell us briefly that how this is started and what is happening with the group so it started actually with my son mm -hmm. uh and a friend a uh, friend's daughter mm -hmm. uh, about almost 7 years ago mm -hmm. and the idea was for kids of indian heritage to come together um at that time he was doing a project in his school it was a community service project but they couldn't find an avenue to do the project in and raise the funds and the other kids he would do he was doing it with one was jewish mm -hmm. and one belonged to a church and this was in newton right and this was in newton, newton high school, school or um noble and greenhouse no one can ask okay sure and they had to wait for a date in the school and the other the two parents kept saying well we could do it any time we could do it in our church we could do it in our synagogue and it made me realize we didn't have a forum in which kids could really do community service sure and the other thing it, i became aware of is that a lot of leadership is expected from kids in high school but they really don't have an opportunity to actually learn it and i think coming from india we sort of lose our family structure our parents our aunts uncles like everybody raised our kids are not raised in isolation the idea that you need a, it takes a village sure. to raise a child our kids here are almost growing up in isolation mm -hmm. and as parents we're trying to figure out the system but our kids are trying to figure out the system in their own way sure yeah absolutely so it's just a constant struggle So the idea for the group was really just to provide a forum for community service and for the kids to come together. And then I started to see that the kids actually needed to explicitly learn leadership skills. And I, you know, I think there's many ways to define leadership, but we wanted to focus on a set of behaviors, a lens through which kids could see themselves. and they could see like you know this is how i can behave this is how i can lead myself this is how i can interact and in the youth group we also provide a way in which the children can see and understand their parents um and also we bring the parents and children together once a year where we have this talk and the each So you are talking about this the annual meeting yes, which is happening on uh, 7th of April this year yes, right Yes yeah Okay So at this annual workshop meeting that we have we bring in a speaker where both sides kids and parents can listen to the speaker and it provides a forum for dialogue And roughly how many people attend this how many kids so parents um, total At any given time I have maybe between 25 and 30 kids. Okay. So it all happens in my house. So that's okay. about how many Okay. <laughs> I can accommodate. So in your house it happens uh, once a month or just a, once a month. Once a month. And this annual one doesn't happen in your house. So. No. no. So I rent a space. Okay. And we go there. Okay. So you have once a month 20 25 kids and then you have a once a year event which is happening next week actually. Yeah. Uh and that is once a year. 
once a year. So tell us a little bit more about uh, uh, this upcoming event. So in this upcoming event, we have uh, Deepak Malhotra. Mm -hmm. He's a professor at HBS at mm -hmm. Harvard Business School. Mm -hmm. And he's going to speak on the power of empathy. Mm -hmm. And he himself told me that, you know, one, he teaches negotiation. Mm -hmm. And empathy is an important part of understanding another point of view. Sure. Um, and he's going to talk about empathy, about challenges that he himself has experienced and the role of empathy mm -hmm. and how important it is. So we're hoping that this gives, you know, sure. rise to an interesting dialogue on both sides, no. children and parents. Great idea. Now, is there any fee to attend this or how it is? How no. It okay. So the youth group, I mean, it's in my house. I, there's no charge. What mm -hmm. about the annual meeting? And there's no charge for the annual meeting. Okay. Um, you know, we just do it. Okay. Perfect. So I think uh, really it's a fantastic service you, you are doing and the group is doing. And as my understanding is that whole group is basically led by the board of uh, it's right. They have a board. Yes, there is a leadership board. Mm -hmm. uh, the children. We have co-presidents, vice presidents, curriculum chair, social, community service, and they they plan the activities. So sometimes a parent will say, "Oh, we should bring this up for discussion." I have to ask the board, mm -hmm. and they'll say, "Yes, no, or we like that idea." But they get to decide. And what is the age group, roughly? At the All high schoolers. All we high schoolers. Usually have, we, I open it up to eighth graders, but they're a little bit young, but it's ninth through twelfth grade. But if an eighth grader wants to come, they can come. And they join. can come. Okay. Now, what has been uh, your feedback from the students? What is, what is their reaction? So I think when, when it started, the parents brought the kids. Mm -hmm. Now the kids bring other kids, okay. and they like to come. So that I feel is really it has been really good to see. I also really like watching the kids as they are growing, and it's very interesting when they share their views, their opinions, their concerns. I think it's a very it's a it's a safe space. It's a wonderful forum for that to happen, and a couple of kids started um, South Asian groups in their schools. Oh, because of this? Because of this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll hear from the mothers that it has been really important for the kids to connect with each other, and they have a stronger sense of identity as a result of being in the group. Yeah. Now, uh, so let's, we want to know a little bit about yourself. <laughs> so you have, a, uh, how many kids do you have? I have two. two. How old are they? So I have one who's in college, and okay. he's going to be finishing college this he's year. He's the one who started. started okay, okay. Yeah. okay. And the other kid? My other, my daughter is in seventh grade, so she's not part of the group. Part, part of the group, okay. And uh, by profession, I heard that you were teaching at Kalaga School of Management. or I was. So I used to teach. I'm an economist by training. Okay. So I did my PhD in economics, and then I worked at the International Monetary Fund for several years, and then mm. I started to teach at uh, Northwestern University at, at the Kellogg School of Management. Um, I used to take students, actually, to India and China. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I used to have a leadership team, and used to I used to travel with them for two weeks, and sometimes the class was like 50 students. Mm. And I think that is when I started to really see leadership in action, because mm. I had a leadership team I worked with, mm -hmm. But although I didn't think about it then, I started to think about it working with these kids. There is a set of behaviors or skills that's, that exist in leaders, whether you know so it or not. So now I have to ask this question <laughs> to you. So what are the two or three key qualities of a good leader? I think it's really how they see themselves. If you can lead yourself, you can lead others. So it's mm -hmm. really how do you see yourself? How do you show up? Mm -hmm. Are you engaged? Mm -hmm. Can you reach out to others? Do you have a value system? Mm -hmm. When you speak up, do you speak up for yourself? Do you speak up for others? Mm -hmm. Do you help others? Do you look up? Do you team up with other people? And most importantly, we want to teach the children, it's okay to fail. Yeah, that's very important. Failure Absolutely. isn't, there's nothing Absolutely. wrong. I think that's the greatest asset you can have. You know, certain people, my personal experience has been that people don't like weakness, they don't like failures. And in my case, I think my weakness has been my biggest strength. As long as I know this is my weakness, so I can go and fix it and be stronger than that. 
And failure is a wonderful thing, really. And I have noticed sometimes, you know, my, with my own kids that they don't want to fail, and which is a terrible thing, you know, that not to even try things because you will fail. Yeah. So that's a very, very, uh, very good, uh, good point. Now, um, what about how many other parents are involved with this group? Or my, Usually my co-presidents, the parents, are a little involved in ordering the pizza. Mm -hmm. um, and just making sure we have pizza and drinks for each meeting. Okay. Um, I, I mean the Coke, right? <laughs> when you said drink, I mean the Coke, right? Coke yes. and water. Okay. I'm just <laughs> yeah. kidding. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, kind mm. of it. I think when it started off, the parents were a little more involved. But as the kids have grown, they sure. drive, they can come on their own. Parents drop them off or they come on their own. So okay. there's less okay. involvement. Now, before I forget, I have to ask you this question too. So you were mentioning that, you know, the uh, Kellogg School. Uh, what brought you to Boston and when did you come to Boston? So I've been in Boston, it might be about almost 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I came because of my husband's work. Okay. Yeah. So where does your husband work? Uh, he works at Harvard University. Okay, okay. So he's, he's he a, teaches oh, at Harvard sure. in okay. the business school. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. So and it's been good for the youth group because we have access to faculty that we can bring that's in for a, the students. That's a great access to have, you know. And sometimes I think, you know, the access and the leadership makes a big difference, the networking connections and knowing people, getting yes, inspired by yes. people is very important. So, well, uh, Anu, thank you very much for uh, coming to our studio. It was really a pleasure talking with you. And if we can help you in any way with this youth initiative, uh, we'll be happy to do that. Thank you. And Thank you. already we do a similar program. We call it uh, 20 Under 20. We have been doing for the last uh, seven years, you know, where we honor 20 kids uh, from the New England area of Indian American origin based on different leadership. So uh, hopefully uh, your group is going to nominate some people for that. Yes, uh, that thing, we would thing. love to do that. Absolutely. We would love to do that. Excellent. And uh, good luck with your uh, program uh, next week. And actually, I might come and join and bring my own daughter, Please. too. Yes, sure. Please, that would be great. Sure. Because we are hoping, you know, when we open it up, sure. we hope that people will come and get a chance to actually listen and hear and watch the group. Okay. Uh, no, I'm time. going to try to convince her to come. Okay. I'm, I'm excited to come. Okay. okay? Anu, thank, thank you again thank very you. much.